think that a lot they of voted for I, this listen, guy. I'm not defending it. But I think there are tons of people that don't pay attention to, and I'm not defending it, don't pay attention to politics at all. But we, oh. while we live in the most prosperous country in the world, people are saying, life's not fair, I'm not doing well, my son's still living in the basement, I can't seem to get a job. Princeton University professor Eddie Glaude Jr. just shared some insights on why he believes the Democratic Party lost this election. Let's dive in and see what he had to say. I don't like the status quo. I'm voting for something else. And he was I person. love you to I life, love you. Oh. but I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe that. And the reason I think you believe it is because you don't want to believe that that's what's really motivating them. It's always the case. We, people don't want to believe what the country actually is, because if they believe it, they're going to have to confront what's in them. I don't believe that. They voted for a crook, a person who they know is stealing from just doing everything to undermine the so-called country that they love. And then they're telling us the BS that it's economics. We know that's not true. Professor Eddie Glaude Jr. is questioning how voters could choose someone like Trump, despite knowing his controversial past. He points out that people who feel the cost of basic items, like bread and eggs, is too high still voted for a figure with a criminal record and a history of offensive comments. Glaude suggests that voters may say they're motivated by economic reasons, but he believes there's more going on beneath the surface that isn't just about economic. Let's take a look at another clip featuring staffers who worked on Kamala Harris's campaign. Someone who was working for the Democratic campaign in Pennsylvania, a battleground state that was key to this election that we lost, I want to give you my experience and why I wasn't shocked or surprised when Donald Trump won the election. As a Pennsylvania native from York County, Pennsylvania, a red county that has historically been red, I knew that when I was coming into this campaign, I wanted to center voices that were in central PA and in the parts of PA that Democrats don't usually go to that are going to impact this election in a huge way. Though I quickly found out that this was not what we were going to do in any capacity. As a matter of fact, many of the people making the big decisions on where we would go or what we would do politically were not even from Pennsylvania and had no idea what Pennsylvanians want or desire. One common theme a lot of the people of color on this campaign experienced was that whenever they actually had concerns or elevated microaggressions or weren't feeling heard and they tried to elevate these, they were pushed to the side, brushed to the side, not listened to, not taken seriously. And we see what the results of that have been. Now, this is no surprise. This is what the Democratic Party has always been. However, it is shocking and highly, highly irresponsible to be putting people in positions of power that act this way on a campaign for a black woman. It makes no sense to me. And as a direct result of my experience on this campaign, I feel the need to remind white people that even if you are queer or neurodivergent and you identify with a minority group, that does not exclude you from acts of racism, from doing microaggressions, from centering yourself in conversations where you don't need to. She didn't lose because of some anti-blackness movement or any out there idea like that. The real reason the Democratic Party lost this time is that they've lost touch with the people they're trying to reach. They used to be great at understanding and speaking to voters, but now it seems like they don't even know who their audience is. And if they do believe they know their audience, then the big question is, why aren't those people voting for them? Let's dive into another clip. Are people t cha challenged with the idea of how do you interact with people who you know voted for this? Right. If you are an LGBTQ person and you know someone in your family voted essentially against your rights or you're a woman, knowing that, you know, this man was calling people the B word. J.D. Vance was literally calling Kamala Harris the trash and said we're going to take out the trash. I know a lot of black women were incredibly triggered by that. And if you then meet somebody and you know they voted for the people who called you trash or if you're Puerto Rican, you know, and you know someone voted that way. Do you recommend just from a psychological standpoint being around them? We got the holidays coming up. So I love that you asked this question because, you know, there is a push, I think just a societal norm that if somebody is your family, that they are entitled to your time. And I think the answer is absolutely not. So if you are going into a situation where you have family members, where you have close friends who you know have voted in ways that are against you, like what you said, against your livelihood, and it's completely fine to not be around those people and to tell them why, you know, to say, I have a problem with the way that you voted. 
because it went against my very livelihood and I'm not going to be around you this holiday. I need to take some space for me. The speaker is addressing the emotional and social challenges that people may face when interacting with family or friends who voted for candidates or parties with opposing views, especially on issues that feel personal or even offensive. For example, LGBTQ plus individuals might feel hurt knowing that someone in their family supported candidates who oppose LGBTQ plus rights. Women might struggle with relatives who voted for people who used derogatory terms or were disrespectful, such as J.D. Vance's remark about Kamala Harris as trash. Similarly, Puerto Rican or black individuals might feel unsettled knowing that some of their family members supported these candidates. As the holidays approach, the speaker is asking for advice on how to handle these sensitive interactions. If you're interested in more discussions like this, please like and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments.